Good evening and welcome to another session in our Tuesday Folk People series. My name is Maddie and tonight here at Homestage we are delighted to welcome West Cornwall based duo Pam and Noel Batowski. The pair encompasses a wide range of musical styles performing gypsy jazz, Irish traditional folk music, bluegrass, klezmer and Latin. Both established performers in their own right, Pam Batowski is a jazz violinist, folk fiddler, vocalist, multi-instrumentalist, composer and former violin tutor at Falmouth University. She has performed at the National Theatre and the Albert Hall, as well as featuring on radio and television. She has written music for film and is the author of the Gypsy Jazz Melody Book for Violin. Noel Batowski is a hot club lead and rhythm guitarist, Irish bazooki player and visual artist. He has performed on radio and television with many lineups. For more than 35 years, Pam and Noel have performed their innovative mix of hot club, gypsy jazz and Irish traditional music as a duo for weddings, private functions and in folk clubs, pubs, concert halls and village halls. So without further ado, let's welcome Pam and Noel to our online studio. Welcome, Pam and Noel. Thank you for joining us. How are you? Oh, we're very well, thank yeah. you. Thank you, yes. It's a pleasure to meet you. Again, Hope again. you're well. Pleasure to meet you both. <laughs> Whereabouts are you based? Um, we're in southwest Cornwall, right near the tip, right near Land's, Land's End. End. Yeah. Beautiful, yeah. beautiful area. In the countryside as well, so, yes. Lovely. Yeah. Okay, well, let's hear your first song so that the audience can know what you're all about. And um, this one, I know you've sent in, it's not the correct name, but it's called Harry Potter Set. Um, could you tell us a bit about this one, please? Yeah, well, first of all, there's two jigs. Um, Have a Drink on Me and East of Glen Dart. They're Irish jigs. And that's followed by a reel, which is played in Scotland and Ireland and all over the place, called the Mason's Apron. And yeah. um, we're putting a few yeah. variations into yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. 
that was absolutely brilliant thank you both oh, very you. high energy and I have to say I don't think I recognize that from Harry Potter that just might be because I'm not a die oh fan. well it was in the wedding scene in the last film <laughs> absolutely beautiful though thank, thank you. you um and how did you get into the sort of the Irish and well the British traditional music? Well, should I you go, go first? first. Or should I go first? <laughs> All right. Well, my um, my grandmother was from Dublin, and um, so I've got lo lots of relatives in the Dublin area, and we used to visit them every year to um, uh, you know f for most summers really. And um, one particular year, I liked before. Um, uh, as a side, I liked a, a band called the Dubliners. Uh, mm -hmm. And um, so my cousin, knowing this, took me to see a band called Sweeney's Men uh, in Dublin. And this was about 1967. And I was just really, it inspired me to go out and buy a bazooki because they were using one in their lineup. Uh, and the uh, musician that introduced it into Irish music was called Johnny Moynihan. And so uh, I rushed out and tried to find a bazooki in London, and I managed to get one—a Greek roundback Greek bazooki—and uh, that's how I started. Really, no, there were no books or there were no lessons anywhere. I just taught myself, put it into mm. a tuning, and taught myself. <laughs> no, amazing. Uh, and what about you, Pam? Um, well, I think I first heard Irish and um, English traditional music when I was about nineteen, um, when I'd gone away to university and um at the same time because before that i've been playing piano and 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 um guitar um a bit and i wanted something i could carry around with me um and the violin once i heard people playing dance music traditional dance music i sort of thought that would be a suitable a really good instrument to, to play because you can play all kinds of music on it as well um yeah. So it, it kind of happened around about the same time, really. It was, um, I suppose it's something in our, I don't know, our ancestry as well, <laughs> something, you know, some sort of deep kind of connection. Yeah. But it was a time that there was a big folk revival just prior to that, really, in the mid-60s or early 60s. Um, and so I started to go to, go to folk clubs here in, uh, in this in place where I lived in Essex, a place called Tilbury, um, and um, so that's how I was first introduced to, into a lot of the, the English folk uh, music, really. So I, I don't know if you yeah. had the same experience of going to folk clubs early yes, on. Yes, or... well, I I started going to folk clubs when I was about 16, but they were, I used to go to a blues blues club um, in um, central London. <laughs> so initially, um, it was well called known. Bunges. Oh, yeah. It was like a well sort of known. a down in a basement <laughs> <laughs> just off of um, Leicester Square. And um, yeah, so initially I kind of got into blues. I was playing blues piano and I joined a little band playing blues piano. <laughs> yeah. And as I was say, the, the violin really came later. I didn't really, um, yeah, at that time. Didn't you two meet? through this I'm not sure because you were a band what was it Four yeah years well, that's right. yeah. Yes. Yeah. yes I joined yeah. a band that Noel was already in this yeah. was by this time this when I was I'd finished college um and Noel's you were still at college but I went went back and um yeah, yeah. <laughs> um yeah we joined 42 pound check yeah this was 1976 <laughs> so it's a long time ago now um but I joined a band uh, through a friend of mine that went to another art college. But um, so that's how we first met, actually. And this it's called the Slade School of Art. And it was in the mm. basement where we practiced. <laughs> it all so, seems yeah. to be in basements. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Very, very rootsy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, Am I right in thinking that you did some sessions with Bobby Casey and Danny Meehan? Is that his yes. name? Yes, yes, we did. Well, I think around that time there was... A lot of there was a quite a big Irish traditional scene in in North London, and um, yeah. So once I found out because I was talking about oh, I need to go to Ireland to hear Irish music, and then I, it was pointed out to me that just sort of about three miles away there was a pub called the Favourite, um, 
where they always they had traditional music nearly every night and yeah. Uh, mm. yeah, yeah so so went down there and we met some of these people and we found out you know that there was this whole music <laughs> Irish yeah. traditional music scene in yeah. London yeah. and so we started going to various yeah. sessions and yeah. playing with some of these yeah. people like there are a, Casey. Yeah, there are a few records. Um, one particular is called Paddy in the Smoke, uh, which is uh, music from that the favourite pub in, in North London. It's demolished now. It's where the Arsenal mm-hmm. football, football ground is now. It was all redeveloped, so it's all historical. <laughs> OK, well, I think we should hear your second song oh, okay. now, um, which I butchered the pronunciation earlier. I'm going to try oh, and say it worry. right yeah, now. Um, is it... <laughs> By mir Mist Duchesne. By mir Mist Duchesne. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so close. Um, can you tell us a bit about this one? Um, right. Um, well, it was written in... I just, I just need to refer to some notes because I can't remember. Um, oh, there we are, yeah. By mir Mist Duchesne. It was written in 1932 for um, a Jewish musical comedy um, and I think about five years later, it was sung by the Andrews sisters, who were big at that time, and it became a big, big hit in 1937. Um, and then I think possibly we first heard it about 10 years ago, yeah. um, just played by some friends. Um, mm. And it's just, it's such a good tune to improvise on. Mm.
<laughs> Absolutely amazing. Thank you both. Um, that's an example of gypsy jazz, isn't it? Yes, it is indeed. Yes. 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 Could you tell our audience what gypsy jazz is? Because if they're anything like me, they, they won't know. Right. <laughs> well, um, it was actually dubbed gypsy jazz much later, probably by Ian Cruikshank in the 1980s. But what it is is a style that was developed by Django Reinhardt, um, guitarist, um, and Stefan Grappelli, the violinist. And um, Stefan Grappelli was born in 1910 and Django in 1912, I think. And um, Django Reinhardt was a gypsy, which is why it's called Gypsy Jazz. <laughs> and um, he, I don't know, he just got better so quickly. He took up the banjo when he was about 12 and he just, went just way ahead he was a very clever man and um but it, when he was 18 he was in this tragic accident he was in his caravan and um we'd just come home and his wife had been making some plastic flowers um wax yeah kind wax of some sort of material yeah. that was very yeah. flammable and um they caught fire and he didn't get out of the caravan in time and he was really badly burnt down his left side. And um, it took him about 18 months to recover. And um, his hand was damaged, unfortunately. He had, mm. um, so it was a bit difficult for him to use, to play in a conventional way. So he developed his own style, really, which involved, um, he did a lot, you know, because he was into jazz and he was doing a lot of improvisation and he was improvising mainly just using two two fingers um and these other two were a bit out of action he could use them a bit for chords but he yeah. found a way of of you you know what using what yeah. he had and yes. he was incredible and then he teamed up with um the Stefan Grappelli who started he was not a gypsy um he sort of came from a kind of bohemian not very wealthy background um and they were both living in Paris Django was on the outskirts of Paris in um Montmartre um and they met up I think when in about uh, 1920 no 1930 I think um and I think they were they were both engaged to do the same on the same gig and Django was backstage and Stefan came in and they would, they just started improvising together. And they thought, oh, wow, this is, yeah. you know, it was amazing. So they then, they're, from then on, they formed the quintet of the Hot Club of France. Um, and so they then they started recording in 1931, I think, was their first recording. Amazing. Yeah. So and it's quite, it's quite a difficult style, isn't it? Considering that Django was doing it with just, yeah. how was it, two or three fingers. Yes. Yeah. 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 Really hard to yeah. master. Yeah. 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 Well, a, a lot of the top guitarists now, I mean, they they they'd all quote Django Reinhardt as a big influence um, on their playing. You know that, uh, you know, from Jimi Hendrix, he had mm. Django Reinhardt albums, and uh, well, all you know, I think they all would would have been inspired by him. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's big generalisation, <laughs> I know, but uh, a lot of them. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. I think we should um, hear our third song, which is Star of the County Down and Sweet Georgia. Okay. Could you tell us a bit about this one? Right. Well, what we've done is um, Sweet Georgia Brown is a really is a kind of classic jazz standard. Um, and it was, when was it written? 1925, I think. Very early on, um, yeah. 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 And so many jazz musicians have, and not just jazz musicians have played versions of yeah. it. Um, but we decided to, I mean, this is why we're also called Jazz Celtica, because we're mixing this, that sort of gypsy jazz style with Celtic traditional music. Yeah. Um, so we decided to put um, uh, yeah. this tune on the, on, at the, the beginning of it, Star of the, of the County, County Down, Down yeah. which is a very just, well known yes. traditional Irish air. Yeah. Brilliant. Well, let's hear it.
absolutely <laughs> fantastic. A really nice way of blending these two styles. Oh, and, um, I feel like that something that you've done here is quite quite wholesome actually because obviously you've mentioned Noel that your family oh, yeah. um, comes from Ireland. Yes. And then Pam, you uh, your your dad was quite a big gypsy jazz performer or he was quite big in the gypsy jazz scene wasn't he well he I think the thing was that he kept that music going um because Django Reinhardt died tragically young at the age of 43 in 1953 and um yeah very the, the music went into decline uh, a little bit out of fashion um really after that, didn't it? Well, Definitely. yes, it did. And but my my father decided he wanted to sort of keep something going, so he um, started this club called Club Django, and other people went to it, and and it ran right from 1955, I think, up until and about when he died 2000. in 2000. Yeah, yeah. and in um, in 1990, John Jeremy of um, Channel Four um, made a program. Um, conjunction with Ian Crookshank, um, all about gypsy jazz and how it had it's developed. Um, it's Django Legacy, the yes. Django Legacy. It's called. Yeah, I had I had a watch, and your your dad was on it, wasn't he? Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yes, yes, yes. 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 Yeah. No, it was really good. Oh, oh. really? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, how did you get into it then? Because obviously, you did from the age of nineteen. You were in Celtic. Yeah. traditional music so then how did you then get back into gypsy jazz um well I think you know after we, we'd been playing folk music for a while we decided to just introduce a few um yeah. gypsy jazz yeah. things didn't over, we over the years yeah, yeah over the years yeah. um but then I suppose we we met somebody in about 2005 who was starting their own club Django and um and, and then there are a lot of quite a few job club Django's I believe around <laughs> Britain yeah. now and in other countries yeah and um yes yeah, so and because he started it we thought well there's somebody else to to yeah. play it because you need a few people to yeah. play it and yeah. um also, it, it, so Pam inherited a lot of uh, her dad's well he, a, a guitar that he made himself in the style of a Selma McAfee and lots of records and all the songs with chords and everything so we thought well you know this is we've got to use this you know yeah. these honor sort of things so and i realized yeah. really when we started playing again how much how much i enjoy improvising i mean i love arranging and writing music but to actually to the improvisation where it's just sort of your cre you're composing on the spot you know right in the time you're just sort of yeah. In this sort of moment, yeah, it's um, it well, it's a really inspiring thing to be doing, and I thought I need to be be doing this, yeah. you know, improvising. Yeah. So um, it's a difficult I, thing to do. I can tell you that I I can't uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, to I'd, improvise. I think I was always better, even when I was little and I was sent to piano lessons. I found it easier to play by ear than oh, really? reading music. I did really, yeah. So. I wonder if that's to do with, with the fact that your dad was obviously so talented at it and it's sort of within you, a bit like you said, with the, the Celtic music being in your heritage. Yes. Might be something that's passed down. Well, I think so, in, in, in the genes yeah. of the yes. thing. <laughs> yeah. No, I will Brilliant. obviously heard it when I was very, very, very small, you know. And haven't you published a book with your dad's tunes and, and chords? Um, oh, yeah. Well, I think I, I wrote out the melodies um, to you know some of the well-known songs from that time and um you know and I used my dad's chords in it as well yeah, yeah it's called the gypsy jazz melody yeah. book he, he left about <laughs> three or four books full of chords uh, to all this all the you know the songs really that uh, yeah. he used they called it the bible I don't know if he actually did but in the <laughs> film Django Legacy they call it the bible but <laughs> <laughs> well I think um we before we hear our last song, oh, okay. which is a bit of a, a favourite, and I think a lot of people know it, it's the "Dance to Your Daddy" oh, right. tune, which my dad used to sing to me, "Dance oh, really? to Your Daddy" when I was a oh, kid. So, oh. so it means a lot for me. Oh, this oh, oh, great. Um, but I did sort of want to explore your instrument, Noel, because you've mentioned oh, it briefly sure. before, the bazooki. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I, it's not like a very well-known instrument. I'm sure some people have heard of it. But could you yeah. tell us a bit about the bazooki? Well, it was. Um... 
first introduced into Irish music in the mid 60s uh, by a musician called Johnny Moynihan. I mentioned him earlier, who was in a band called Sweeney's Men. <laughs> and um, he, somebody, a friend of his, went off to Greece and they, he came back with this. And they sort of said, you know, oh, what's this old yoke, as they <laughs> called them in Ireland? <laughs> um, and they started playing it. And um, it became an integral part of that sound with the mandolin sort of playing counter melodies and harmonies. It's just a really lovely sound. And I kind of got drawn into that. And after I heard them in Dublin, um, I, as I say, I went out to find a bazooki. And um, unfortunately, that I had the Greek round back bazooki that I had was stolen out of my car. And this was just at the time when I started playing with Pan in 1976. So I desperately needed a new bazooki. And mm. so, um, well, after a while, I found one just around the corner to me where I lived in a place called Chadwell St. Mary in Essex. Somebody made, a uh, chap made instruments and he made a bazooki. Uh, but then a few years after that, I, I got a Stefan Sobel made bazooki, who's one of the top makers in this country. In the world, I mean. uh, And I put it into a tuning. I, I did play the mandolin prior to owning the bazooki, the Greek bazooki. And I sort of put it into this GDGD GD tuning, which was a sort of bit of, bit of a halfway house between mandolin and just being able to play sort of these open chords on it, which sound quite, uh, yeah. it's very simple, you know, it's it's quite impressive sort of thing. Um, yeah. so, I think you mentioned last time that it's quite good for modal, the yeah. modal side of folk yes, music. Yeah. yeah, it has a, you know, this sort of being um, an open tuning, it has a, a drone to it that... Uh, so, you know, in different keys, I have to put a capo on. Yeah. So, you know, for, for different keys. No, I have to say that the fiddle, like the melody of the fiddle that Pam's playing is very much complemented by that bazooki. I think oh, it's thanks. absolutely oh, brilliant. Oh, that's really nice of you to say. Thank you. Not a problem. Right. Well, I think, sadly, we're out of time. Oh, what's um, So could you tell me a bit about your arrangement of Dance to Your Daddy? Sure. Oh, um, <laughs> Well, I think all it it's just it's the tune, <laughs> and then yeah. I sing with it, and then yeah. there's the tune again. <laughs> and, well, and, I put, and I put in a bit yeah. of um, yeah. I think I play a bit of a harmony on yeah. the on the yeah. violin. But also, I think because we've been playing it for so many years, um, <laughs> over the years it's sort of it's evolved almost yeah. by itself, you know. And I'd sort of go quiet so that Pam's uh, voice could be heard. So it just sort of, we didn't sit down and work out the um, arrangement. It just sort of evolved from I think it playing just sort it, really. Of happened, yeah. really. I mean, uh, as a native folk. Mm. Yeah. Brilliant. Well, thank you so much for joining oh. us. I'm sorry that we didn't have more time. Oh, but it's been oh thank you so much. To yeah. To you. Yeah, thank lovely. you so much. For yeah, thank thanks you. very much. Yes. Thank you. Yeah.
Thank you very much, Pam and Noel. And thank you, everyone, for watching. If you would like to keep up to date on our future Tuesday for People sessions, please do sign up to our mailing list or keep an eye on our social media and all future information will be posted there. Um, our next session will be a week from today at 8pm. And I look forward to seeing you then. Bye.